Thank you, Abraham. This is a, a very, very special time in my life to be uh, out of Australia, in America, and on this particularly wonderful cruise. Yeah. My question lies around, I mean, I've, I've read, I've listened to you for some time, and I've just recently read a book that I picked up called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a it rhymes with duck. I don't think I should say it. Truck. <laughs> you are naughty. Um, <laughs> thank you. And, it, and it's really about focusing on what's important because we only have so many ducks in our life to focus on. And I... Well, we are in slight disagreement with the premise because desire matters. And so someone who is not able to manage their attention in the direction of their desire could be having a rough ride and therefore thinks that it's good to just give up desire, which might be all right if you could, but you can't give up your desires. You can give up your resistance to your desires. So we disagree with the premise of the title of the book. So how do we focus more on achieving our desire? Is it simply being more in the receptive mode? Certainly. But how do you go about that? In other words, those are just words. Okay, got it. Bye. <laughs> I'm trying to be more conscious in terms of being in my vortex. And I think that's a really hard stumbling point for me because I have an analytical mind and I get all caught up in doing. What you're looking for really is about tending to the atmosphere around you. Let's say that you've lived some life and through life, you've lived enough contrast that you've asked for quite a few things. And let's say for the sake of this premise of this book and this conversation that many of those things that life has caused you to ask for and that you are consciously aware that you've asked for haven't come into physical manifestation in the way that you want them to. So there is this obvious big gap between what you know you want and what you've got. So you want to close that gap. You want more of the things that are missing to come and more of the things that have come that you don't want to leave. In other words, you want your life to transform into more manifestations that are pleasing to you. Well, the most important thing to realize is that those things that you've been thinking about, which are the reason that you're living exactly what you're living, those thoughts have momentum. And the reason that things aren't changing very much, which is why someone would write a book like that or make a statement like that. The reason things aren't changing is because, and this is true of most people, most people are looking at what is mostly. So if you're looking at what is, you're offering a vibration of what is, which means only more of what is can come into your experience. So even though things are always changing in your experience, they're changing to more of the same. You're recreating the same things over and over and over again, because you are recreating the same thoughts because you are doing mostly observing, even though every day that observation is launching more rockets of desire. So what happens is as your observations are launching more rockets of desire and your vortex is becoming richer and fuller and law of attraction is responding to the vibration of your inner being in a stronger and stronger way. That's what's causing that emotional gap between you and you. In other words, you keep asking for more. Your inner being keeps finding more for you. Your inner being keeps showing you where the more is, but in your observation of what is, you're not going. And so the feeling of not having is becoming stronger and stronger within you. And so it's that emotional gap that you must close first. The manifestational gap, the cars in your garage and the people in your life and the experiences that you want to live, all of those experiences must come to you, but only can when you close the emotional gap. Well, what does closing that emotional gap means? It means being angry less and happy more. 
It means not being afraid, but being confident. It means having love rather than hate in your heart. It means feeling good, not bad. It means being satisfied, not dissatisfied. But when you take one of those subjects that you've been maybe thinking about for a long time in your life that has so much momentum, you don't have much of a chance of finding a satisfying thought about something that has so much dissatisfied momentum going. And so you have to pick new subjects. You have to find some subject that doesn't have very much going on within it. We were talking with a woman many, many years ago when Esther was still allowing people to call and speak with Abraham on the telephone. And she wasn't having any of us. She wanted us to be a fortune teller and she wanted us to tell her the fortune that she wanted to hear. And she was not interested in deliberate creation. Really. She just wanted someone to tell her something that she wanted to hear. And we were telling her as best we could what she wanted to hear, but she couldn't hear it because we were telling her she was a creator of her own experience and she didn't want any part of any of that. So we asked her, what is it that you want? And she couldn't come up with anything really other than what she had already said. And we said, but what do you want? And she had no words. And so we started coming up with some words. Well, what about this? Mm. What about this? She couldn't get any momentum going toward desire because she had found discomfort in almost every thought of desire because she was vibrating in opposition to almost everything that she wanted. So everything made her uncomfortable. So we said, let's talk about some other things. Let's talk about blue glass. She didn't want to talk about blue glass. Why would she want to talk about blue glass? But we talked about blue glass anyway, for over a minute. We talked about blue glass, the depth of it, how opaque it might be, how transparent it might be, how translucent it might be, how textured it might be, the different colors of blue. It was really an uncomfortable experience for her. She did not want to talk about blue glass, but we did and did. Then we said, now let's talk about, uh, butterflies. She didn't want to talk about butterflies, but we focused with her or without her on butterflies for another minute or so. And then we said, let's talk about feathers. She didn't want to talk about feathers either. And somewhere about the end of our dissertation about the magnificence of feathers, she left the phone conversation. And Esther went and found Jerry. They were in California. They were in La Jolla at the time in a hotel and they were on their way down to Prospect Avenue to have lunch at George's. And so they went down and they parked their car at the Valencia hotel where there's a valet who will take the car. And when they got out of the car, Esther had this impulse so strong, she could not deny it to go inside this store. Now that's not altogether unusual for <laughs> Esther, but the impulse was so strong and she dragged Jerry kicking and screaming because he was hungry and on his way to lunch. And she said, just for a minute, just for a minute. And they got back into the back of the store and on the back wall was a ceiling to floor wall to wall display of blue glass. And it didn't register with Esther. It didn't mean anything. Esther had been there during the conversation, not really focused, sort of like now she's semi aware of, but not really. It's different when Esther is allowing Abraham to flow and Jerry hadn't heard the conversation at all. And so it was just beautiful blue glass. And then off they went to lunch. So they had lunch at George's and looked at the ocean and bask in the beauty of their lives. And then they walked down to the cove, which from their perspective is the most beautiful place where the land meets the sea. And as they walked across this big apron of grass, as, as they were walking across it, a flurry of butterflies so intense surrounded them that they had to stop talking, which was odd for them <laughs> in order to not eat butterflies. And so they just sort of stood still and then moved on. It was, like nothing that experienced before. And when the butterfly cloud lifted, Jerry said, do you know that little boy? And there was a little boy off a distance, very young, walking well, but not for long. And he was headed right for them, looking right at Esther. And he walked up to her and handed her a feather. 
and then Esther realized that within a very short period of time the universe had orchestrated an experience where three things that we had drawn attention to that were three things that Esther held no resistance to whatsoever and when there is focus absent of resistance there is manifestation and so that's the thing to do start with things that teach yourself the trust that our friend was talking about teach yourself the feeling of the universe providing for you opportunity to know because whatever you want has already been given whatever you want has already been given but you say then where is it how do I get my money out of the vortex and into the bank how do I accept that it has been given when I can't spend it yet and we say therein lies your problem if you need it to be manifested right now and you won't give yourself the opportunity to feel the unfolding of it which is really what you've come for you've come for the joy of that journey of witnessing the unfolding and so as you back up a little bit and you leave aside for just a little while the intensity of the desires that haven't been coming and the reason they haven't been coming is because there's obvious resistance maybe not obvious to you but obvious to the universe obvious to us if it is wanted and not coming then there is doubt in the way and if there's doubt in the way then how are you going to get rid of that doubt and most would say give it to me anyway and we say really defy the laws of the universe you want to be the one exception in all of the universe to get something that you're vibrationally adverse to you don't want that you want to be vibrationally aware of what you're doing so that you have control of what comes to you yes so start with the easy things and witness the unfolding of those easy things what you witnessed today was not one of those easy things it was one of those powerful 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 desires that was matched with the expectation that allowed it to be and so it was and so it is enough thank you so yes, much yes indeed yes indeed